What is up everybody, Sven Diesel here. We're going to be making a special rabbit brush. This is pretty much a uh, rabbit uh, fur, um, rabbit hair dubbing brush, but we're going to make it a little special and I'll show you the secret ingredient here in a minute. But here's the materials you're going to need. You're going to need a stainless steel. Um, this is a .006 in size medium stainless steel wire. You're going to need some wire cutters. You're also going to need some uh, scissors and you're going to of course need the rabbit material this is in a crayfish color just a regular strip and then here's the special sauce that is the Galdwell feathers in a brush and also the low tack uh, wax so we also need a dubbing table this one here is from fly fish food what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get my uh, uh, stainless steel wire started over on this side I'll just spin the drill making sure the drill is all the way out and then I'll wrap it down to measure and then drop my bobbin over here to the side that way there's tension on it I'll raise the table and now we're gonna get out a rabbit this was very difficult I've struggled with this as you can see we've had some prototypes up above I think I finally dialed it in and here's the trick you gotta take your time and cut off an inch at a time and the other trick is you don't want to um, spread it out too thin uh, you want to just basically set it down like that so I'm gonna take it cut an inch and kind of push it down with my scissors onto the table and then I'll go ahead and stack it. So this is pretty much the most boring part of making these brushes but it saves a lot of time at the vise. You can see how dense this brush is going to be. We say in fly tying that less is more but in all reality on this one more is more. You want to basically lay it down so it's almost thicker than what you think you're going to need because um, in all reality you're going to want it to be thicker. If you look up above, uh, the f I left these out because the first brush I did is the bottom one and that's when I spread out all the rabbit and you can see how sparse it is. It's not really that great and then after about, oh shoot, I don't know how many I did. Um, it's been a long night of doing brushes, but we uh, the top one is about the consistency I want it. Um, that's as dense as it would be as if the hide was on, but we don't have the hide. We've got just the stainless steel core. So one, it's durable. Two, we're not building up huge amounts of bulk. I use on uh, th these are going to be particularly used on a crayfish pattern that I've been uh, working on um, over the year, and I like it to be a little bit of a narrower profile. And I found that with wrapping that height around it was just a little bit too much and so I've done dubbing loops traditionally but this is when I'm going to be you know producing quite a number of them uh, we'll get about three or four um, crawdad or crayfish patterns out of this one dub brush depending on what size hook we use so um, just again the tips are take about an inch at a time pull it up so you separate those fibers and then just push it down with your scissors against a, a surface like a table and then stack it right in place and you can see I'm kind of cleaning up some of the uh, strips I've had in here but it's looking really good at this point I've got about um, an eighth of an inch of the uh, under fur on the one side of the wire because that's going to be our core and we're just going to keep going all the way to the end and it's getting a little bit tedious at this point and I, I apologize but thank you for bearing with me you can see we're almost there and there we go that looks really good that will do it that completes our brush I'm just going to inspect it now to see if there's any spots that could use a little bit more um, uh, rabbit that looks pretty good so we're going to go ahead and use now our special uh, trick this year uh, gadwall feathers um, I'm going to try and pull out some uh, selected uh, longer fibered ones. Makes it a little bit easier. You can also use mallard flank for this, uh, depending on what colors are available. But I like these uh, Gadwall um, fibers because they seem to be a little bit thicker than the mallard. And all I'm doing here is I'm taking off about three to six fibers at a time and just stacking them so that the butt ends line up with the bottom of the rabbit. And what you want to do is... Um, the same philosophy with the uh, the rabbit uh, before is you want to make sure you're doing more is more uh, if you were pulling one fiber two fibers at a time here you wouldn't see them once we get the brush done and so what we're trying to create here is 
the um, legs uh, that would be on the, the crawdad or crayfish and these uh, this offsetting color contrast is going to create that because this will extend out of the rabbit as you can see from that brush up above that's finished those those legs are protruding out and uh, make it look really nice now if I was tying this um, without a dubbing brush it'd be very difficult to create a dub loop and put the rabbit and these in at the same time you'd have to um, lay it out on a um, board or a, a surface like a, a fly tying bench and then use like a composite uh, loop to do it or uh, longer tweezers to create that I know that Loon makes some that I use and um, uh, using the uh, magnetic fly tying bench makes that a little bit easier but um, all I'm doing is I'm spacing these out every so often uh, just to remember when we spin it up it's not going to be as visible since this is on the top layer and uh, it will be spinning around and blending more with the, the rabbit. But there we go, we used about two f um, feathers. I've got a little bit here, I'm just going to add a little bit extra and just inspect it to see if there's an area we forgot or um, if there needs to be one or two extra more. You can be as meticulous and meticulous as you want. But we are ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wire, fold it up and over, measure it. I'm going to cut off my bobbin with plenty of room. Notice how I didn't let the wire touch that those those fibers or that rabbit at this point. And then I'll take some of this low tack um, uh, wax from J Stockard, run it up and down. And now here's the key. I don't want to let that wire touch those fibers yet. I want to get it through the hole over here. And my arm's probably in the way. You won't be able to see this, but I'm putting it through the hole and then I'm going to pull it. But before I pull it, I'm going to make sure it's aligned so that wire drops right where I want it. And now you cannot let go of that wire. Make sure you get all the fibers aligned. You don't want to spin it with, you know, the hair is in between the two wires and we don't have any on the opposite side. And then I'm going to pull the drill away from the dumbing brush and give it a little bit of a twist and then drop the table just a little bit. The reason I drop it just a little bit is you saw it started to mat. If I was to leave that table up, it would mat around the wire. You'd have to brush it out. But by just dropping it a little bit, those fibers are hitting that table. And then once I get it all the way down, I can drop it all the way. And now the key is to get it tight. Watch this arbor here. As it starts to walk out, it's tightening because you're spinning it around those fibers. And once it's tightened about a half an inch, maybe three quarters, I want to raise the table back up and brush this out. You're going to lose a little bit of the under fur, um, some of the fibers that didn't really get trapped in there, and that is okay because I'd rather it do it now at this point than you know when the fly is already done and you 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 got a bald spot on your crawdad. But you can see how this is uh, quite an easy process. We're not losing very many fibers. Um, usually, if I'm doing like a bigger like a craft fur brush, I'll use you know different brushes for this. But I found this stainless steel little brush just really gets these out and works it really really nice. And so I'll just go up and down once, um, and then I'm going to drop the table, pull the tension again, and spin it until that arbor comes in about another half inch. And what we're doing is we pulled out some of the under fur. I'm retightening it, and that right there is a good brush. That looks killer. I'm going to trim it out, and you can see this is just going to be ultra fishy. Make it easy. Save us a little bit of time with the vise. Like I said, um, let's let's show a little contrast here. I don't know if you can quite see what this looks like but we got a really good core and then you can see that uh, gadwell um, uh, f fibers extruding out and so as I wrap that those are going to stick out and form legs there's a bunch of color combinations you could tie this in but here's how you make a brush for this I uh, hope it helps you out if you got a brush table mm -hmm.